Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. So, we've just entered the month of June at the time of publishing this video, which means we are exactly halfway through 2021, for better or for worse. And this means that it won't be much longer before we begin the fourth quarter, which is the biggest time of the year for print-on-demand designers to hopefully make a lot of sales. And in today's video, I'm going to go through eight ways to help you increase your sales and at the same time, get your shops ready for the fourth quarter. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so the first tip that we're gonna be discussing today, all right, deals with using search-friendly keywords. And these keywords are fundamentally important in all of your uploaded designs because without them, people will not be able to find your design. So when you are actually uploading a design and considering how are you gonna have everything laid out on the products, you do have to make sure that you are actually looking at this very important section here at the top where you have your title, your tags, and your description. And in each of these fields, you need to use search-friendly keywords, all right? That repeat, again, in the title, in your tags, and in the description. Why? Because sites like Redbubble, TeePublic, and all of these other um, print-on-demand websites will not be able to tell what your design is based on what you've uploaded, okay? In order for it to be able to show your design on appropriate pages in search, you have to give this kind of information. Without it, it won't know how to index your design. And if it cannot index your design, people aren't going to see it. And if people don't see it, well, then your chances of getting a sale is next to nothing. So it's really important that you take the time to go through this area over here and actually fit in these search-friendly keywords. Another thing to keep in mind in this, with respect to this tip is that be specific, particularly with respect to your title. Don't be quirky. Be specific in terms of what your design is stating and get right to the point so that obviously your design will show up. If it's quirky, the algorithm won't know exactly what it is that you're trying to say, where it should be posting your design, and if it can't post your design on the appropriate web page, then you're not going to get any sales. So keep that in mind. Okay, tip number two pertains to listing your designs on as many products that the particular print-on-demand platform you're working on has to offer. In Redbubble's case, you have over 90 different products. Now, be careful over here. For those of you who have been watching my channel now for some time now, know that I am an advocate for putting your designs on as many products as possible, but within reason. What do I mean by within reason? Well. I'm the type of person that if my design looks good on a product, I leave it activated. If it doesn't, I turn it off. I'm not the type of person who's going to leave a design on a product that doesn't look good simply for the sake of having that product activated. Remember, your shop is an extension of your professionality. When buyers are coming to your shop to see your designs on particular products, it goes a long way at telling them whether or not you are a professional or if this is just something which is like a hobby and you're not really taking too much effort into it. If the designs on your products don't look good, that doesn't send a very clear message to them that you're worth investing their time and more importantly, their hard earned money on your products. Now, I don't want to sound cruel here, but given the fact that we've got so much competition out there, We've got large shops like Walmart and, and Target and, and what have you who are selling shirts with really nice designs at a very, very low discounted price. And then we've got prices on these particular print-on-demand websites, which including our own personal margins do make for a hefty price and then adding on shipping and handling. People are gonna think twice before opening up their wallets to a design that doesn't look good on a particular product. Now, if you want to make the sale, you've got to take the time to make sure that your designs look good on each and every product. If it doesn't, guys, listen, turn it off. It's not worth it. Now, you could actually turn on the, the repeat function on it so that it shows up in the form of a pattern on the product, and that might work good for duvets and throwovers and tapestries and whatnot, but go into it and really analyze whether or not it works good for that product or not. And if it doesn't, turn it off. Okay. Now, 
all of the designs on all of the products that you have are going to create a new web page which are going to be indexed on Google. You're going to get more images again which will be indexed on Google and in turn those are going to give you more exposure in search on Google and in Redbubble, TeePublic and what have you so that your designs are going to be seen. This is fundamentally important in the here and now but even more so in the lead up to the fourth quarter. As you know, the fourth quarter begins on the 1st of October and usually ends on the 31st of December. It's a Christmas time period where people are starting to buy gifts for loved ones, friends, office colleagues, what have you. This is the time of the year where you want to make sure that you are really digging down, focusing on creating designs, seeing what's trending, considering certain evergreen niches to design for, and really go hands in on making sure that you create as many designs so that when the 1st of October starts coming around and people are in the mood to start purchasing and buying for gifts, particularly if they don't want to go and contend with traffic and shopping malls and what have you, they just want to sit in the comfort of their own home, you know, with a nice cup of coffee, going online, visiting sites like Redbubble, Merch by Amazon, TeePublic, Zazzle, Society6, what have you, they want to make sure that they're going to enjoy the time going through the particular websites and purchasing products to use as Christmas gifts for friends or for themselves. So, do you want to make sure that your shop has a fighting chance of appearing in search? Well, the best thing to do now is to consolidate, dig down, start designing and making sure that your designs look good on each and every product. Again, if it doesn't, deactivate that particular product. Okay, the third tip that I want to be discussing with you today um, pertains to creating collections or albums, depending on what platform that you use, in order to help your potential client, buyer, um, find it easier to find certain designs based perhaps on a particular topic or niche. Now, if we're looking at Redbubble over here, on the left-hand side, you've got the filter section, and within the filter section, you have a list of all of your collections. Now, what's important here is that the title of your collections are also search friendly. Be specific. Again, don't be quirky or too wordy in terms of what or rather how you title your collection. Remember, this will also be indexed by Google and when it's short and sweet and to the point, it will be able to tell Google exactly what the collection is all about. A new web page will be created for it that will be indexed and people will be able to click and find your designs a lot easier either via Google or when they are visiting via Redbubble or TeePublic or what have you. One further tip that I would like to give uh, to you today with respect to collections is try to keep your collections in alphabetical order. It just makes it easier for people to read through and to glean through so if they're looking for a particular niche or particular subject or topic for a design that they're looking for, it's a lot easier for them to go through an alphabetized list rather than jumping from one letter to another. It just gets a bit confusing and for some people, it might throw them off and they might want to leave. Now, if you're uncertain as to how to put your collections in alphabetical order, it's very, very simple. Let's take a look. So, the first thing that you want to do is you want to go into your Manage Portfolio and then what you want to do is click on the Collections tab here. All right, and then when you have your collections tab, you're gonna have your titles according to the collections that you've made. So abstract art, cats, dogs, food lovers, birthday adult, travel photography, and birthday children. Now, in this particular case, we want to bring the birthday categories up before the cat category. And all you need to do is hover your mouse pointer over the collection you want to move, press and hold the left mouse button and just move it up to where you want it to appear. And then when you're happy in terms of where it's going to be placed sequentially, you can just let it go and obviously Redbubble will just obviously push all of the other collections aside so that it fits in. And you do the same thing with birthday children. So left click, grab and drag and place it accordingly. Now you've got your list in alphabetical order. All right, And then you can just click on works to go back and you can actually click on viewing your shop. And there you have it, in the collection section, you've got all of your various collections in alphabetical order. Again, it's just those, it's just the little things that make your shop look a little bit more human, okay? And that you've actually taken the time to go through everything and anything that you can possibly modify to give an experience to your client that's gonna be one which is joyful, happy, easy, and obviously when they feel these great vibes, they're going to be more open to the idea of clicking on the add to cart and making a purchase. Okay, tip number four 
pertains to your tags. And as we stated earlier before, it's very important that your tags are search friendly. Try not to put more than 17 tags per listing. So anywhere between 14 and 17 tags, okay, is a healthy number to use. And as I've stated before in prior videos, try to use long tail keywords, okay? Let's, key, let's, let's be real. Print on demand platforms are very saturated. We've got thousands upon thousands of designers who are trying to sell their artwork on these kinds of platforms, which means that there are hundreds of thousands of different designs for every possible niche you could possibly think of for cat, dog, travel, you know, these single word keywords, which everybody wants to put in thinking that they're going to be indexed at the very top. And the reality is you're not going to be indexed at the top unless you make a huge amount of sales that Redbubble or TeePublic or any of these other platforms automatically bring your design to the top because understandably they want to make money. If you sell, they make money too. So they want to make sure that they show your designs as their best sellers high up in the rank. But the likelihood of us always being at the top with these particular keywords is few and far between. So you need to be very wise about how you go about putting your, your keywords. All right. And using long tail keywords is a great way of ensuring that you get up to the top of the list. Remember, even if you use long tail keywords, sites like Redbubble and TeePublic and otherwise are going to break down the keywords you use in that long tail keyword and index you accordingly for there too as well. So it's in your best interest to use these long tail keywords to try and rank as high as you possibly can to get your designs seen by other people. Now, also, with respect to tags, it isn't just enough to sit there and just start typing away a bunch of keywords in the hopes that you're going to get seen. There is a little bit of a thought process that goes into this too as well. And you have to actually take yourself from the perspective of the potential buyer. Okay? Try to go through an example where you try to find one of your own designs and see how easy it was to find it, what keywords you had to use to find it, and Try to take note of what steps you took in order to be able to see your design appear in search. And through this exercise, you get to appreciate a little bit more of what a potential customer would have to go through in order to try and find your design. Okay, So putting yourself into the frame of that person can really help you refine what kind of tags you put in with each respectful design. And then let's say, for example, maybe you come up with about seven or eight really good keywords, but you're uncertain as to how, what other ones you can use. Well, this is where you can use online websites like Synonym Finders to try and find synonyms for tags that you've already installed or rather tags that you've already inserted. This way you can then round off your entire list of 14 to 17 keywords and feel confident that these will be keywords that people can actually go in key in in order to hopefully find your particular design. You might also want to ask yourself, what is the style of your design? What kind of feel does your design actually portray? Are there any particular colors that might be of interest? And most importantly, what is the topic and the subject of your particular design? These are all important questions to ask yourself and the answers you come up with could potentially be those keywords that you formulate together to make your long tail keywords so that you can help make your design really successful. All right. Now, I did create another video in terms of how to use long tail keywords, and I'm going to link that in the description below. So I would definitely recommend that you have a look at it after you watch this video to help you to reach more success in terms of creating great tags for your designs. Okay, so tip number five pertains to your artist profile. And for those of you who may be unaware of where it is, if you go onto your shop here and you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you're going to find your artist profile. In this particular case, about Brian Tutorial, all right? Here you want to add information about yourself that gives your shop a more human feel. So if people can sort of feel a connection to you, they might be more open to the idea of actually buying from you. Now, it's also very important here, guys, again, for professionality's sake, that you make sure that your text is comprehensible, that people can read and understand it. Now, again, I appreciate that there are a number of you out there for whom English is not your first subject, and that's absolutely okay. But today, 
in 2021, there are a number of websites out there that can help you to make sure that your sentence structure, your grammar, the understanding of your text is something that people will be able to comprehend, will go a long way again of showing that professionality. All right. So it isn't enough just saying, hi, buy for me. Don't continue plugging it. People are there because they want to buy something. Try to give them a little bit of information about you. Don't go in always for the hard sell because if you do, that's going to turn people off. Okay. What is it that you like? What is it that you're hoping for? I know you're hoping for sales, but don't go and tell them you're hoping for sales because again, that will turn them off. And keep in mind that Redbubble only gives you so many characters to play around with in this profile section. So be very selective, give it some thought, think about what it is that you want to put in and give it that human feel. I've seen a number of shops in the past where the artist profile was absolutely amazing. But unfortunately, I've seen profiles where it wasn't that good, right? Give it that human feel, give it the time that it needs so that people will enjoy the experience of visiting your shop. And in turn, they will reward you by going through your shop a lot longer and hopefully finding a great design that you've created that they want to put on a t-shirt, a mug, or any of the other products that the particular print on demand website offers. Okay, so don't skip out on that. Fundamentally important. Okay, so the sixth tip that I want to discuss with you pertains to designing for the product, okay? Now, in the past, there have been those who stated, you know, create a large file on Photoshop or Photopea, you know, 10,000 pixels by 10,000 pixels so that it'll fit on everything and that way you won't have to tweak and whatnot. And for some designs that actually works, particularly, you know, like these abstract designs and whatnot. But when it comes to text designs, that might not always fit the bill. Okay, and for things like masks and mugs, and even in terms of greeting cards, we need to actually stop and take a few moments to make sure that we're designing for those two as well. Now, I created a video not too long ago called the seven biggest mistakes that could actually sabotage your sales. I'll have the link into that in my description below, and I definitely would encourage you to watch that, particularly if you are new to the print on demand business. But if we just take a look at my screen over here, we can easily see that there are a lot of great looking designs in terms of masks here, and that's wonderful. Well done, kudos to everybody who's designed a mask that really looks good. But then there are those, unfortunately, which I don't want to beat them up, but it doesn't look like a lot of thought was put into place when it came to designing for that particular thing. It's like maybe perhaps they designed for a t-shirt and then allowed it to be activated on a mug simply for the fact, or rather a mask, simply for the fact that they wanted to appear on a mask. Now, if we take a look here, again, we've got these text designs here that fit only on one side too as well. Well, wouldn't it be nicer if perhaps maybe in this particular case the text design was on both sides of the mask? And really and truly, it's not that difficult to do, okay? Um, simply opening up the template and just duplicating the same design on the left side as you would on the right side and then re-uploading it in the section for fitted masks so that it appears on both sides. This way, if somebody's looking at it from the left or the right, they're going to be able to see the text of the design too as well, which really looks really good. Okay, again, here's another one. Summer makes me happy. But wouldn't it have been nice maybe to put um, a graphic icon on that side? All right, we've got this one over here. It's a little hard to read. The floral pattern looks really nice, but it's something in French. Okay, again, no, we're not knocking the languages. You can create a design in any language that you want. All the power to you. But again, you've got one side with a design. The other side is all blank too as well. Okay, and I know we didn't want to put it in the center because the stitch might make the text look a little weird and perhaps people wouldn't want to buy it and rightly so, but maybe putting a text design on the other side would have gone a long way at making and flourishing the design a little bit more. Okay, the same thing holds true with respect to greeting cards. Now I just, Father's Day is just around the corner so I decided to bring up some Father's Day cards and I created newest. And right at the onset, if we take a look, we've got this one over here, we've got this one here, this one here, this one here, any of them that have a colored background, it's clear, again, the design was made for everything in general, but it wasn't taken, but greeting cards weren't taken into consideration because a greeting card postcard has a different type of figure configuration. And again, it isn't difficult to do and it isn't going to be extremely time consuming to have a design as a PNG and then you open up a template that, you know, these 
print-on-demand websites provide with you and just literally clicking and dragging the design in Photoshop or Photopea onto the, the template for the postcard or greeting cards and actually spreading it out to make sure that it fits within the parameters. And that way when it's re-uploaded for that particular product, it's going to look really nice. Now if you have it on a white background, you don't really need to worry about it because the default background is white. But in terms of a color, you've got all of this white background or this white border all around it. And again, it doesn't look like the designer took the time of day to make sure that this particular design looked the best for this particular product, okay? And then if we happen to take a look at Monks too as well, again, with respect to Monks, some people might like to have the design on one side of the mug and that's absolutely okay. With websites like Redbubble, you do have the opportunity of taking the template and duplicating the design on both sides of the mug. I do that with all of my designs because I feel that if somebody's left-handed or right-handed, they should be able to enjoy the design whichever way that they want to hold the mug, all right? But in either case, whether you have it on one side or two sides, it's also very important that you choose the correct default setting for mugs so that when Redbubble is indexing your design in the search, you're gonna, the potential buyer is gonna be able to see the design. Now let's just take a look at this one over here. We got this one. The title is Eat Sleep 24 seven classic mug. Where's the design? Clearly it's on the other side. Maybe this was an error, perhaps maybe design, maybe it was a joke, I don't know. But if you were a particular uh, client, would you actually stop to click on a generic white looking mug? Let's move on. Here we have another one, Fly a Garrick Tall Mug. Okay, again, we've got the design here peeking up on the left hand side, but a potential buyer can't see it. And again, I hate to seem like I'm preaching about it. And maybe for those of you who are seeing my video for the first time, if people are searching for your shops, most people nowadays are buying via their mobile phones and the screen size on a mobile phone is not that great. Add on the fact that the thumbnail is gonna be smaller. If people can't see what your design is on the mug or any of the other products, chances are they're gonna keep scrolling through. They're not gonna stop and look at to see what you have inside your shop and they're gonna move on someplace else. So in this particular case, take a look and make sure that you are actually designing for the particular product yourself, especially with products like mugs, masks, and obviously face masks. Okay. Tip number seven is understanding the audience of the platform that you're working on. Redbubble designs tend to be internet culture and pop based with a good number of trends in the design making process. Okay, so if you go through and see what kind of designs are, are being made, you're gonna find all of these pop culture, internet trending type of designs. So you might wanna design for those and if you're uncertain as to how to go about doing it, well, take a few moments to research. Go into it, click on t-shirts, Find your best selling, click on the best selling, which is down over here, and scroll through some of the designs. Click on them, take a look at the tags, take a look at the, the, the descriptions and the titles and design itself. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to go in and copy pixel for pixel. That's not right, okay? Somebody has worked hard on that design and you should respect that person's designer integrity. But doesn't mean that you can't go in and get inspiration from it and maybe come up with your own take on that particular design, all right? And you know what? It just might be unique enough that somebody who's visiting Redbubble or any of the other platforms that you might be uploading to might see it and say, hey, that's actually a cool design. Let me look into it. And they might actually buy it, all right? Don't be one of these people who go into the best-selling section and make a carbon copy of somebody else's design and upload it. Um, I did see a video one time not too long ago. I believe it was Detour Shirts. Well done, Juna. All right, pertaining to this one, the great ramen of Kanagawa, all right? And he actually went into it and he showed how many times this particular design was blatantly copied, all right? And that's not right. Just ask yourself this, you wouldn't want that to be done to your particular design, so don't go ahead and do it to somebody else, just for the sake of trying to make a sale. Probably what will happen is that your account will get flagged for obviously copyright infringement. You might risk getting your account suspended or worse yet, closed down. So don't do it. It's not worth it. Now the final tip, tip number eight, pertains to designing for less popular or less saturated products. And what I'm talking about here is at the time of uh, publishing, Jigsaw Puzzles, just by doing a quick search, only has 68,218 results. 
Now, compared to t-shirts, which as you can imagine, probably there are millions just on Redbubble alone, this is just a drop in the bucket. It's a very small number. Now, if you had to maybe perhaps consider opening a shop where you're designing just for jigsaw puzzles and focusing on this particular product, you're going to have a better chance of actually ranking higher for different types of niches or different types of topics within the jigsaw puzzle product that might actually lend you more sales. Um, another one could be aprons, for example. At the time of publishing, there are only 139,000 results on Redbubble alone, which again may seem like a large number, but this is indexing all of them. If you then had to go into a particular niche just on aprons and maybe create a shop just for that, okay, think of the possibilities of, well, one, you're spending less time designing for all of the products. You're focusing on this particular product alone, and you're, allow you're allowing yourself the opportunity to de delve deeper into the design making process for that product. You become more of an expert at it, and you watch your shop grow, and hopefully, so too will the sales. So it's something to consider. While yes, it's great to be able to have your designs on all of the products, you are then going to be competing with a larger number of designers who too want to get their designs on their products but maybe being a little bit more selective towards a particular product and just creating a shop based on that product, it might actually provide you with a little bit more success. At the end of the day, you really don't have anything to lose because it's not costing you anything more than just your time to create the product. But you know what, if you do hit it and you are successful, just think of the profit margins you'll make simply on jigsaw puzzles or aprons or duvet covers. Again, remember the fourth quarter in most of the world is a colder time of the year, so people will be looking for throws and pillows to cuddle up with on the sofa, duvet covers to snuggle up with at nighttime to stay warm. You might decide to yourself and say, hey, listen, I'm just going to design for those particular products. I'm going to open up a shop of a particular niche, and in that niche, it's only going to be duvet covers and throwovers, for example, and you just focus your time on that. And then if you really become a master at that, you can actually then open yet another shop and focus on different products. Again, there's no hard fast rule about how to go about it. If you wanna be a general store and design for everything, all the power to you, you can. But if you wanna niche down to a particular type of product, you can do that too. It's all about trial and error and see what works. What's most important is that you do not give up. There are gonna be times where there is a huge lull and you won't make a sale. And then there are other times your mobile phone won't stop ringing with email notifications that you've received something from Redbubble stating that you've made a sale, all right? So do keep that in mind. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I tried to provide you with some concrete uh, workable tips that aren't that difficult to do. It's just a question of being consistent and putting in the time and effort to make your designs and your listings the best they can possibly be so that they'll reap fruits for you in the upcoming fourth quarter and even in the here and now. I understand that it's not always easy because there are lulls in the times when people are buying or not buying, okay? And it might be, you know, you might ask yourself, is it worth it? Should I continue going through with this? And that's perfectly natural. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? But push through that, focus your attention on the here and now, what you need to do, and your shop will be better for it, and those sales will start coming in. So that's all I've got for you today. Until next time, stay safe, be well, be creative. Bye for now.